Hello everyone and welcome back to Korean History. Today's video is part of Project Middle East, which is a collaboration of history YouTubers talking about Middle Eastern history. In this video I'll talk about the different monarchical titles and roles of the Middle East as well as the wider Arab world. A few years ago I made a similar video regarding European monarchical roles, so I'll make some comparisons between the Middle Eastern and the European ranks to see how they equate to each other. While there is no specific term for an emperor as we know it in the Western world, in the Middle East terms like King of Kings date back all the way to antiquity and were common in the Middle East throughout the ages, especially in Persia. To start with the terms most common in and around Persia, we have the term Shah, which Europeans of the past have equated to the rank of king, although the rulers of Persia always saw themselves as Shah on Shah, meaning king of kings or Padishah, meaning master king, and thus being on the same rank as emperor. The last ruler to hold this title was the Shah and Shah of Iran who was deposed in 1979. But throughout history a number of states, mostly influenced by Persia, have also used Shah and its related titles for their own rulers. Next we have Malik, which can mean a number of different things, but primarily a Malik is a ruling monarch of a kingdom. The term can also be used in a broader sense for rulers with a lower title, such as a prince or a chief, but in most uses it refers to king. Before the advent of Islam, Arabian monarchs traditionally used the title of Malik, or a similar term as there are quite a few different variations to it. The earliest forms of the term were found among the pre-Arab and pre-Islamic peoples of the Levant and Mesopotamia. It has since been adopted in various other areas and cultures, and even some Asian languages use this term in a similar sense. This title was most common in the Middle East before the Middle Ages, but in relatively recent times a few nations have changed their ruler's title to Malik, as a title equated to the rank of king in the Western world. Bahrain, for example, was formerly under a Hakim until 1971, then under an Emir, and in 2002 they changed the title for their ruler to Malik. Other Maliks include the ruler of Jordan, which was formerly an emirate, Morocco, who was formerly a sultanate, and Saudi Arabia is also classed as a kingdom. In that summary I mentioned the term Hakim, which means ruler, governor or judge. While currently there are no countries with a ruler of this style, there have been some in the past, such as Bahrain, Kuwait and Qatar. I'll also quickly mention Imam, which is a religious leadership position, but in some cases Imams could also rule a nation. Some historical examples being the Imamate of Oman and the Imams of Yemen. The following titles are probably the monarchical roles of the Middle East you've heard of before, that being the Caliph, Emir and Sultan. And these three terms are quite linked to each other, so that's why I'll cover them one after the other now. Starting with the highest role, the Caliph. The Caliph ruled over a Caliphate, and the person who holds the title of Caliph is considered a successor to the Islamic prophet Muhammad, and the leader of the entire Muslim world in both a religious and political sense. Caliphates were political entities that developed into multi-ethnic transnational empires centered around the Islamic faith. There were four major caliphates that succeeded each other, as well as some minor ones, but we'll stick to the four major ones for this video. The first one was the Rashidun Caliphate, then you had the Umayyad Caliphate and the Abbasid Caliphate. 
But in 1517, the ruler of the Ottoman Empire claimed caliphal authority, becoming the Ottoman Caliphate, which lasted until 1924, and no official caliphate has been recognized ever since. Wali al-Ad is the Arabic and Islamic term for a designated heir of a ruler. The practice of designating an heir has pre-Islamic roots among the Arab tribes. The rulers of these tribes, rather than hereditary, did often designate someone from the tribe to be the heir of the ruler. And this practice continued with the first caliph, who nominated a successor, who in turn nominated a group of prominent Muslims to choose one of their own as his successor. This went on until the first Umayyad caliph, who chose his own son as his successor and the caliphate became hereditary after that. Although sometimes a younger brother could be chosen instead, or multiple sons could be nominated as first and second heir, although this often led to disputes within the succession. The next term we'll cover is the Emir. In the early Muslim world, ultimate power and authority was held by the Caliph, who was considered the leader of the Muslim world, but after the 8th century, the Caliphate had grown more fragmented, with local governors administrating regions and areas in the name of the Caliph. These regional leaders were appointed by the Caliph and held the title of Amir or Emir, which can be translated as commander or prince. Nowadays, emirs and emirates are still around and can be equated in rank to the principalities of Europe. Some modern day examples are the independent emirates of Qatar and Kuwait, as well as the seven emirates which make up the United Arab Emirates. As the term is roughly synonymous with prince, emir or emira can also be applied to a son or daughter of a hereditary monarch. For example, all members of the royal house of Saud have this title. Next is the Sultan. Even though both Sultan and Malik, or King, refer to a sovereign ruler, the term Sultan is considered distinct from Malik, as Sultan carries a more religious significance. The term stems from those emirs of the early history of the caliphates, which we talked about earlier. As time went on, some of the emirs, which were technically ruling on behalf of the caliph, became more independent and grew more powerful. And the term sultan came to be used as the title of certain rulers who claimed almost full sovereignty without claiming the overall caliphate for themselves. This meant that while theoretically they were part of the caliphate, in practice they were ruled independently with the caliph having no governing authority within their sultanate. The first major figure to clearly grant himself the title of sultan was the Ghaznavid ruler Mahmud who controlled a region in and around modern-day Afghanistan. Soon after, the great Seljuks adopted the title of Sultan after defeating the Ghaznavids and taking control of an even larger territory, which also included Baghdad. This is significant as Baghdad was the capital of the Abbasid Caliphs. And while the Seljuks acknowledged the caliphs in Baghdad as the universal leader of the Muslim world, their own political power clearly overshadowed that of the caliphs. This led to various Muslim scholars attempting to develop theoretical justifications for this political authority held by the Seljuk sultans. And in general, the theories maintained that all legitimate authority was derived from the caliph, but it was delegated to sovereign rulers whom the caliph recognized. And it was argued that while the caliph was still the guarantor of Islamic law, coercive power was also required to enforce the law in practice, and the sultan was the one who was allowed to exercise that power directly. 
The positions of Sultan and Caliph began to blend together in the 16th century, when the Ottoman Sultanate conquered the Mamluk Sultanate and became the indisputable leading Muslim power across most of the Middle East, North Africa and Eastern Europe. This was also the time when the Ottoman Sultan, Suleiman the Magnificent, was recognized as the Caliph. This makes it hard to place the term Sultan on a specific rank, as at the start of the term it was more equivalent to King, but as time went on, it became more similar to the rank of Emperor, as seen with examples of the Sultans of the Seljuk or Mamluk empires. And to make it even more confusing, the Ottoman rulers were also known to use the term Sultan of Sultans to set them above any other Sultans. And to add even more confusion on top of that, modern day Sultanates are relatively small and I wouldn't really class those on the rank of Empire either. Speaking of modern day Sultanates, there are two sovereign sultanates left, that being Oman and Brunei, as well as there being a number of sultanates within Malaysia as well. And Morocco used to be a sultanate as well until 1957, when they changed their ruler's rank to Malik. Thanks for watching. On screen right now you can find a link to the Project Middle East playlist where you can find more videos from other history creators on Middle Eastern history. I'd like to thank my patrons for their support, especially my $25 patrons Parker Dye and G. David.